I'm not good at math, I have no experience, I don't have hands-on skills, and more are some of the big objections I see people bring up when it comes to wanting to enter an engineering field. Now, there are people who should not join engineering, and others who might be turned off from it for the wrong reasons. In this video, I'll address both of these cases and who should or shouldn't do engineering. So let's get into it. The first hands down most common one I see is I'm not good at math. Now, if what I was observing when I read comments and searched forums was I was bad at math, I went to engineering and then I flunked out, I would tell you guys to consider other options if math is not your thing. But that's not what I've been observing. I've seen a lot of comments saying something along the lines of I was not good at math at all, but I just put in a lot of effort to learn the math concepts and I ended up graduating in an engineering degree. I've read books like How to Excel at Math and Science by Barbara Oakley, which I did make a video on, where the author states she was not only bad at math but terrified of it and didn't get to even learning trig until her 20s. But once she learned how to learn the subject, she got a bachelor's, master's, and PhD in different types of engineering disciplines. So if you're not going to do engineering, I'm not good at math should not be the sole reason. But let's also be real, people do drop out of engineering because it is hard. So where's the fine line? Well, of course, there isn't a right answer, but to kind of put this together, if you're bad at math and you are someone who cannot keep going when things get tough, then you'll probably give up because it's going to get difficult. But notice how I say difficult, not impossible. If you ever struggled with a class before, then you know what it's like. And yes, engineering will likely be more difficult than what you've faced so far, but it's not like you haven't gone through difficult subjects before and made it out on the other side. And also, millions of people have graduated in engineering. It's not like you're trying to win a Nobel Prize right now. It goes back to what Seth Godin says in The Dip. In the beginning, you can improve your knowledge with little effort because classes can begin slowly. But after a certain amount of time, you'll hit a dip, where as you work more, you may not even see improvement and your grades might even go down. This is the dip where so many people give up. If you're not willing to work past this, then don't start the endeavor. But there's always a point where afterwards, your growth will accelerate way more than you can imagine. Right now, anyone with just a basic math or science background could watch the first lecture on quantum mechanics at MIT, and you will be able to watch it and not be totally lost during the lecture because there's no intense math or anything like that, which is why I'm using it as an example here. It starts off in a way you can learn without putting in too much brain power. This is like the beginning of that curve we saw above. In the beginning, some classes don't start off crazy hard. You'll learn and can kind of just sit back and watch, but that changes over time. But by the third lecture, it gets much more technical, where even if you have the prereq knowledge, you might still be confused and you have to go home and study the notes and homework for one hour to really not feel lost. Then by the next lecture, even more stuff pops up. You got the old stuff, but the new stuff is now really confusing, where you need two hours of looking over notes and reviewing practice problems just from that lecture. And as time goes on, you might need to spend hours to days to feel like you know what's going on in a class. But to you, it will feel like forever or that you'll never be able to do it because you're studying way more but not seeing the results that you saw before. And this will be how it is for a lot of classes you take. Trust me, you can learn these things. The question is, one, do you want to? And two, are you willing to work through that dip to get to the other side? I'm not good at math, added with, when I start to get really confused, I will probably just quit is the formula I see for being someone who should not enter engineering. But there's multiple variables here, so don't just focus on this part, which a lot of people do. The next objection I see is I don't have any experience, which is also something I've done a video on, so I'll be quick on this. I personally entered electrical engineering having never made a circuit, never written a single line of code, or done any engineering hands-on projects at all, and I still graduated with a degree. I use myself as an example here to really emphasize you don't need any real prior engineering experience. Just the necessary classes completed to enter the college you may want to go to. Now when you get to college, some people will have experience and that can be intimidating. And some classes will start at a fast pace where it feels like you not having experience is holding you back. But don't worry, teachers don't assume you know much about your given field when you enter college and most people who enter engineering have never programmed or worked in a real engineering project at all. The next two are less common, but I've seen them come up. First being, I'm not good with my hands, and you're worried you might have trouble soldering if you go into electrical or computer engineering, or maybe you'll have trouble welding if you go into mechanical engineering. And this honestly isn't something I've thought of much, but don't worry if you aren't skilled in those hands-on things. Believe it or not, a lot of engineering jobs involve mostly computer work where you're working with simulations, 3D models, and more of that stuff, rather than physically working on a product. That's where technicians, machinists, and construction workers often come in to do that kind of work. This isn't always the case, but it does apply more than you may think. So if you don't have those hands-on skills, you really don't need to worry. If slash when you have to do that work, there will be classes to help you, and those will start from the beginning. 
Now, another hands-on skill I've seen come up is do I need to be good at drawing? Because this is something engineers do sometimes. Production engineers might have to draw the layout of an assembly area. Manufacturing engineers could have to draw part of the layout of a project. Plenty of mechanical engineers or civil engineers will have to do some drafting at one point and so on. But the thing is, even if slash when you have to do this, this is not drawing like an artist. It's specifically an engineering drawing and doing things like projections to represent 3D objects. You will have classes on this, plus a lot is done on the computer, and it's way different than being a skilled artist. So don't put too much pressure on this at all. I never really thought about this, but since I've seen questions on the channel, I decided to throw it in. Now who is engineering maybe wrong for? Well for one, if you're just doing it because it pays well, probably pick something else. Sure, it can pay very well, and after graduating, you could be making more than most of your friends. But you'll have that one friend who's making more, and then you'll start to wish you did whatever they did instead. Chasing money in general is a bad idea, but if you are going to, don't choose engineering. Along the same lines, if you've heard engineering has so many job opportunities, don't just start applying for it. You need to do more research. Sure, there can be plenty of job opportunity, but you can find that in other fields too. It's probably too soon to make a final decision that has such a big impact on your life. Another classic is your parents in engineering. Now, if your parents were slash are engineers and that's what they want you to do, but you're really hesitant, then don't pursue it. You really don't have to look far to find someone who did what their parents wanted them to do and they ended up regretting it. They say you have to learn from your mistakes, but those mistakes don't have to be your own. So pick something else you have an interest in. Also, don't major in engineering if you have nothing else to major in, or you only have a rough idea of what it is and what it can lead to. Like maybe your friends or parents said, maybe you'll like this discipline, and they're not that knowledgeable. I've known people going into computer science because they thought it would be all making video games, or people who think mechanical engineers just do machine work. Try to get the full picture and be prepared for what you're getting into and where it can lead. You don't need to be an expert, obviously, none of us are going in, but do more than a day's worth of looking. A lot of comments I see are only positive and recommend engineering to anyone who even mentions it. And I like to be optimistic but also realistic in that it's not for everyone because we're all different. But statements like, I want to but I'm not good at blank shouldn't be the deciding factor. Do more research and make an informed decision. A lot of people, even some who drop out, could get through it and eventually find work they enjoy, but plenty of people quit or just won't want that and will stop. The goal is to find out if that's you before entering into really any major. I'm going to end that video here, and if you liked it, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.